Hi everyone, I'm excited to start my new playlist on image processing. This has been a really long time that I've been wanting to kickstart this, but I was really waiting for the right time so that I can build the underlying necessary Matplotlib and Seaborn libraries and then a couple of other different modules that you might need to kickstart your image processing journey. What you're seeing on the screen is one of the biggest improvements in image processing in today's world. A lot of cameras around the world, a lot of self-driving cars, your mobile phone, your laptops, all the applications that use images and cameras in general use image processing these days. It's a big thing, it's a big move and I'm really excited about that. I don't know about you, I'm into photography, videography. Image processing is probably one of the closest techniques of AI and machine learning that is to my heart. So let's go on with number one. Let's kick and start our journey on image processing with the very, very basics. So the roadmap for this playlist is gonna be more around first just opening our images in Python, being able to handle them around, and then moving into more advanced concepts. So I'm really hoping to start building from the fundamentals all the way to the very advanced approaches. Before I continue, I wanted to mention two points. Point number one, if you like my videos and enjoy my channel, I would really appreciate it. If you like my videos, subscribe to my my channel and help this community grow. Point number two, for all my videos, the code and the data is uploaded to my GitHub repository and the link is in every video's description down below. So feel free if you follow along, go ahead and download and continue with me. Let's make a new Jupyter notebook, give it a proper name. Let's call it image processing number one. I will need two libraries to begin with. One is from matplotlib import I plot as PLTs. This is going to be for showing images. And the next one is from matplotlib, matplotlib import image as MP image. So that's the module for handling images in matplotlib. Now I have an image of an insect here. Let me just open it for you. So I have this stink bug here in my data folder and that's in GitHub repository if you want to download it. What I will do, the first thing is reading an image, which this one is in PNG format, but doesn't matter because the image method from matplotlib can read a lot of formats. The function to read images into Python is imread, which is short for image read. So what we not, what I need to do, I want to give it a name, bog image equals mp, mpimg dot imread. And I need to give the name of the file, which is stinkbog.png. If I run this, now this image has been read into Python. So does Python see that as an image the way human eye does it? No. Python needs to convert it into numbers for it to be able to do any processing on it. Let me show it to you. So if I print stinkbog image, if I print it, you will see that it is just numbers. So the image has been converted to numbers. You can see a word here that says array, which means that if I look at the type of this input, you will see that it's a NumPy array. Something to remember, this is really important when we go ahead to use pill library or OpenCV or any other library, we need to remember that imread from matplotlib converts an image to a NumPy array and keep that in mind. The next thing I want to check about this image is definitely the size of it and the shape of it. So if I go to the end and look at the shape, I can see that it's a 375 by 500 by 3. You might ask, well, this is a two-dimensional image, so it has a y-axis and an x-axis. What is this third one? Remember this. Images, most of the time, images come in RGB format, red, green, and blue format. These are the three color channels of everything around us. That's a coloring system. More details on that to come. Before I continue from here, one of the parameters you can set for imread is actually format. So I know that the format for this image was PNG. So if I do this PNG, it's not going to matter. I'm not going to use it because that's, that's the auto detection. In some images, when you read them, you will see that you have the dimensions, the first two dimensions and four different colors. There is one RGB, which I told you, which is red, green, and blue. And the second type is RGBA, which is also called RGB alpha, which is red, green, blue, and alpha. Now, 
Again, further details on that to come. Now that we have converted the image from a PNG file into a NumPy array, how do we actually see it in Python? Imagine I did a bit of processing and I wanna know how it looks before and after. So the best function to view your image from a NumPy array is I am show from matplotlib. So if I go ahead and say plt I am show of stink bog image, I can visualize the image in my screen. You can see that first element is the y-axis and the second element is the x-axis, which is 500. And if I wanted to see this bigger, all I need to do is just make a bigger figure. So PLT figure of big size equal to eight by eight. This will give me a bigger figure to look at. So now I'm gonna go back again to the shape. I told you that this image is 375 in y-axis, 500 in the x-axis, and three different channels. Can I divide those channels from each other? Yes, I can. So if I tell you that this stink bog image, I want all the y-axis, so I want all the vertical of the image, and I want all the x-axis, so colon means I want all of it, but I only want the first layer, so the red channel. If I print this, it will only give me numbers, but if I view that, let's go ahead and only view the red channel. So PLT, I am show, and I'm gonna copy this here. This is the red channel for this image. Can I look at the green channel, which is number one? And this is the green channel, and this is the blue channel. You are not gonna really see it any differently because those channels do not have a big difference in this specific image. How do I know that? Look at the numbers. So I'm looking at the red channel because that's number zero in an RGB image. This is around 0.4 all around. If I look at the green channel, it's pretty much the same, all the same values. And in the blue channel, it's pretty much again, the same values. So I'm not really gonna see them. But when they stack on top of each other, they make a bigger, they make a different color of image. This, let's revert this to zero and call this sting bog image. And this is red and equal it to that. And let's just look at the red. So what I did, I just saved one of the layers in a new name and that's gonna give me this. Now, if I wanted to make it bigger, let's just copy this and bring it down, paste it here and I will have a bigger image. I would like to give it a title because I don't like images without title, red channel. That's the red channel. Let's put a semicolon at the end so that I don't really see this. Cool, this looks clean. So what if I wanted to change the colors that they appear? Because if I run a plt.color bar, you will see that the colors run from darker blue to yellow in this specific CMAP. CMAP is a short form for color map. So if you go, cmap matplotlib and if you jump into the cmaps web page you will see that there are various cmaps that you can use by default i am show uses viridis so this top one the one that i was showing here however what you can do you can change the cmap to any of them that you you like for example if i use plasma i'm gonna set the cmap to plasma and that will produce a different color of image. Now you can start realizing that the theory and the practice behind a lot of image processing software like Photoshop, Lightroom, and so forth is essentially playing with colors and channels and intensities and frequencies. So we will get there one by one. For now, we are just reading a very simple image. Is there any other CMAP that I would like to try? Yes, if I set it to grays, you will see that in grays, it will look a lot like a negative image. Let's set it to greens. You will see that it will show everything in a color palette of green. Now, let's look at the distribution of intensity in this image. What I mean by that? When I look at this image, I see a lot of darker green, so around the 0.6 green and then some lighter around the insect itself. What I can do, I can say PLT hist. I want the histogram of what? So the image that I made on the red channel. So let's just say I want the red. Then you need to ravel this. For now, just follow my lead and plot the histogram. This is a bit busy. Let's put a semicolon. Let's add the number of bins to 256. And this essentially shows you where most of the color for this image lies. So I can see that 
as I was visually testing it, I said there is a lot of colors around 0.6 and you can see that a lot of color is around there. If you were more interested, say in zero to 0.4, you can set the limit there. This time I'm gonna say PLT IM show. I want to show this image, okay? And I want to set the limb, the color limb between zero and 0.4. What it will do, it will crop anything past 0.4. So I'm losing all this data and I'm only plotting the insect itself. But you can easily see that this is a very good object detection technique. So you're gonna get rid of all the background noise because you don't really care and you're gonna detect the insect itself. We are getting into interesting places. Allow me to make a before and after plot. I want to plot these two next to each other so you can see how changing the limits looks like. I'm just gonna code this really quickly and come back. But if you wanna follow the code, Pose me when I have done the code and write your own one. So let me show you what I have done. I have made a figure using plt.figure and I've given a figure size of 14 by 10. Now I am adding two subplots. So in one row and two columns, but number one is gonna be this. I'm making an image plot using plt -IM show, just plotting the red channel. I could just plot the original image, doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna call it before and set the color bar underneath, which is this one. In my second image, which is this here, I'm plotting the red channel again, but I'm setting the C limb or the color limb to zero and 0.4. And I'm calling it after, and I'm setting the ticks on the ledger. Now you can see that just changing this 0.4 to five, to six, to seven, to eight, to nine and to one makes them almost identical. I understand that the colors are just a bit different. The before one goes on only 2.7 or eight. This is the idea behind limiting the amount of color on a histogram basis. So if for this one, I set the limit from say 0.7 to 0.8, let's see what it looks like. So I'm just gonna say, set this from 0.7 to 0.8. What I will capture is pretty much nothing from the insect. I can only see two antennas and then nothing. Let's roll this back to zero and 0.4. This is only to show you how you can play with the image and play with different channels. Because if I change this from red channel to the original image, so my original image was called stink bug image, you can see that because I have all the channels, even setting this from zero to 0.4 is not gonna really be helpful in detecting that insect. But if I set it to 0.1, again, I'm not gonna see any huge difference. That's it for the very first video on image processing. So we were able to read an image separate the different channels and play with the colors and the color maps on that image. Stay tuned for the next one where I'm gonna show you more functionality in image processing in Python. But before I let you go, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel as it really helps me grow my community. Thanks.